Got a Troy built model number 2890, which is a three stage, 28 inch wide, track driven snowblower. If you haven't seen one, that's what they look like. We get hit hard most years, but ever since I bought it, not so much. My luck, that's just my luck in life. This is what it looks like. 28 inch wide. As you can see, that's a three stage. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to change the oil, spark plugs, as well as lubricate every point which you should lubricate. Electric starter, like I said, there goes the tracks. LED headlight. Troy built Vortex Tracker 2890. These are some of the products you're gonna need to get it up and running and have a worry-free winter, okay? First thing you're gonna to wanna to get is K100, which is basically an enhancement for the fuel. So it raises the octane if there's any moisture whatsoever. If you didn't stabilize it right or anything, you don't want that going into these small engines. So this basically raises your octane levels, okay? I'm gonna explain all this as I go through it. You're gonna need white lithium grease. You're gonna need brake clean. You're gonna want, this is what I recommend, but you can use WD-40, you can use PV Blaster, any uh, rust inhibitor, but this is stuff is real good. You're gonna need grease, you're gonna use synthetic grease, spark plug. I use this brand in all of my equipment, E3, part number is gonna be E322. Oil, get yourself a quart of this, 5W30, synthetic. You're gonna need anti-seize lubrication. And I'm gonna explain all this to you as we go through it. Okay, sit back, relax, take notes, and let's get First it. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find your spark plug, which will be on the left side of the machine. This is your spark plug wire, you're gonna pop this off. You're gonna grab it with pliers or your hands and rock it if it doesn't come out easy. Never grab it by the wire, always by the metal, okay? After you have your spark plug boot off, you have a 1316 spark plug in there. So you're gonna need a 1316 socket or a 1316 spark plug socket. Whatever you have, you're gonna pop that out. You take a look at it. That's what they look like. It's not bad shape. This only has approximately seven to nine hours on it. It's fairly new. But since I took it out, it's only a cheap part. You might as well put the new one in. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the spark plugs. This is your E3 on this side. And here's your standard spark plug. You're gonna get a gapping tool you want to make sure you gap this spark plug to 0 0.030, which is 30 thousandths, okay? All spark plugs should be gapped unless they're iridium or certain platinum ones that don't need to be gapped, but E3 needs to be gapped. So this spark plug, you're gonna put it in here. And as you can see, you're probably talking 0.025 right here, okay? So now to adjust it, if you have this type of gauge, you're gonna put your spark plug through here, through the small hole, like so. And then you're gonna, see that angle? You're gonna open it ever so slightly. It doesn't take much to move these a lot. Then you're gonna find your 30,000 spot. As you can see, I went way too much. So now you could take it, Gently tap it to close it a little bit. And you're gonna keep checking it until you get 30 thousands right there. Some people say yes, some people say no, but I always take a little bit never sees and apply a very light coating to your threads. So when it comes out in the future, you have no issues. 
like I said, some people is on the fence, yes, some is no. I've always done it this way, and never had an issue in any car, any engine, or any truck, for that matter. That's not diesel, of course. As you can see, I lightly coated it. Now, when you go to install spark plugs, a trick is, if you have a hose laying around, regular hose, heater hose, any hose you got, you're gonna take your spark plug, and drop it like I did. If you do what I just did, you drop it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the gap didn't close, which as I, you can see it did, so regap it again. Make sure it's 30,000 over. Let's try this again. You're gonna take your hose, take your spark plug, shove it in the hose. Okay, like so. The reason why you do this is because if you cross thread this spark plug into this head, you could be in for hell. Okay? You don't want to do that. So this prevents any cross threading. So you're going to take it. Like I said, it's hard to do on camera, but you get the point. And you're going to catch it and make sure you're in the right spot. You're not cross threaded. This is just the start. Once you have it started, you're going to take your socket, tighten it up. If you look at these spark plugs, you see this is called a crust washer that they have on here. Some have it, some don't. These models do. So after you tighten it up, once it bottoms out, that means this plug is all the way in. On a new spark plug, you're going to give it another half a turn to compress this thing right here, the washer. If you're reusing the old one, if you cleaned it up and you're reusing it, you can tighten it down to it touches, and you're gonna give it a quarter turn. I got my spark plug properly installed. I'm gonna take the boot, put it over like so, and press it in. If you have a snowblower that sat over the spring, summer, fall, and you never started it, and you have some fluid in here, some gasoline, I recommend like I said before, this is what it looks like, proven all-in-one for gasoline, K100. Okay, prevents phase separation, stabilizes the fuel for two years, complete injector cleaner, all this. Most important one, octane booster. And ethanol separator, okay? These engines are small engines. When you go to the gas station and put 87 octane in your car, you're not gonna have no issues. These little engines are very sensitive to water inside the gasoline. And to prevent any headaches with the carburetor gumming up, the needles getting clogged up, you will wanna put this in. One half ounce of this to every gallon, okay? This is approximately two gallons right here. You can't add too much of this anyway, okay? You can see here. You can add anywhere from a half ounce to one ounce per gallon. So this is two gallons, you're gonna put two ounces. You can put three ounces, it's not gonna hurt it. There's no way this will hurt it. So me, I always put two ounces in each one of these tanks. Like I said, if you haven't added, you can add it now, and this will help you. If you did add it, you can add it again. It's not, there's no way this will hurt the most. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is start it up. Using either your electric starter or the conventional pole starter. Okay? If you've never seen one of these, you're gonna turn this over to the rabbit, which is fast. You're gonna wanna pump this three times, which primes the, the bowl inside, okay? You're gonna wanna put your choke on. Okay. I'm gonna grab the handle. Let me show you. I'm gonna put it fast. Put on your choke. Pump it three times. Three. Grab your handle.
after you let it run for five minutes, you're gonna shut it off. That makes the oil warm, circulating all the contaminants and everything around. We're gonna come to the back of the snowblower. And if you see right here, 10 millimeter drain plug. That's where the oil drain plug is. You're gonna to wanna to take a wrench and secure this so this tube doesn't back out, if it does. You're gonna put a wrench here, it has a groove here. Take a 12 millimeter wrench, put it on the pipe right there, because it has a groove. You're gonna take your 10 millimeter here. See, you didn't need the wrench. Crack it loose. Pull out your drain plug, it's not under much pressure. Like I said, make sure you have a can underneath to catch this. Pop it out. And let the black gold spill out. While that's draining, you don't want to come to the top where you put the oil in. Right there. And pop that open to let the air come in that way and it'll drain much faster. While that's draining, you're going to take your white lithium grease, which is a plastic store that you always lose. And I'm going to show you where you're going to hit with the white lithium grease. We're going to start from the front of the machine. On your auger. This pin right here, it's called a shear pin. In the event that as you're snow blowing, you hit something hard, solid ice, you don't mess up your gearbox in here. Okay? These pins are sacrificial limbs, so to speak. So when they hit something solid hard, they break off, saving your gearbox, okay? So, you're gonna take your lithium grease, you're gonna hit in here, you're gonna hit in here in between these two. You're gonna come back here, you're gonna hit here. You're gonna hit here. Come over here, you're gonna hit here. You're gonna hit that side. You're gonna hit in here behind here and straight in the back you're gonna hit that too with white lithium grease you can't get too much on this so let's have at it hit there. you can hit the pin too you don't want that if it shears off, you don't want no issues down the road. You can hit over here, wherever you see a little rust. Come over here. Hit that. Come over here. Hit that. Hit right here. Hit your pin, that's another pin right there. You got two of them. over here on this side hit that didn't notice this last year but here's your shear point as you can see this is free spinning which it should not so you can take your shear pin you can find your hole which is right there you can see down in there see no hole hole you can drop a pin in and put the clip on the bottom side. I'll show you when I do that. In the meantime, let's finish up here. You're gonna hit that. There's your fourth shear pin. There's one there, one on this side, one on this side, and the one in the front. Okay? So hit everything first with the white grease. Try to get behind this impeller right here. Hit that. Hit in front. And behind the gearbox, you're gonna wanna hit. So you're gonna come from around here, like so, and hit that. As for your auger, this is what a shear pin looks like. Here's your clip that locks it into place. I'm gonna show you how to install it. You're gonna move this until you find your hole, which is there. You're gonna take your clevis and drop it down through. Then 
very simple. You to come out the bottom, right there. You can take your clip. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you, but you're gonna take your clip and basically, let's see, yeah, maybe. You're gonna take that piece that's sticking out, push it through until it locks into this little center section right here. Like so. That's all it is to that, okay? As you can see now, this is firmly locked into place. Your back one is locked into place. This one is locked in. That one's locked in. Before these pins break, before the snow comes and you're out there snow blowing, you're gonna wanna get, it comes with four, but you're gonna wanna get an extra four to keep on hand just in case, okay? We got a lot of ice storms up here, so I didn't even notice it. Probably the last time I used it, I hit that brick of ice or the neighbor's cat or a bird or a rabbit and it stopped it from breaking my gearbox. What I'm gonna do is fluid film, rust and corrosive protection. And you're gonna wanna hit everywhere where you see rust starting or everywhere you don't want rust to start starting. Teams. This just leaves a coating. The bottom, your bolts, your plate, this stuff stinks. Be warned. Get your plate, your bolts. And put it everywhere. It's already starting to rust. You don't want to have that. I didn't do this last year. You don't want to have it start rusting. You want this to last as long as possible. So just spray where you see rust starting. Don't be afraid of this stuff. Like I said, it smells. Along the sides. You put it right back where you just put the white lithium. Mm. Your gearbox, share pins, back inside the propellers in the back, hit it good. I don't know how much is coming out on camera, but you get the point. Okay. The, the better you do this, the longer your machine will last. Get the body of the machine and inside. I'm gonna do this every year. The end of every season, the beginning of every season. And your machine will last a long time, trust me. I ain't doing this last year, you can see already starting to build up. Okay, get back in there. That's it. Boom. Wherever you see rust starting, bolts, hit them. Come back behind the trucks, hit the axles. Hit the axles, stay there, bolts, here, top of the engine. Wherever you see bolts, hit it. Come to the side of the tracks, bolts, bolts, bolts. All these bolts, hit it with the fluid film, okay? Here's your, your skids, you're gonna hit that. That rust one right here, I'm gonna hit that. You got bolts here, hit the bolts. Hit that, hit that. Come down to the tracks. Hit there. Hit that one. All the bolts. There. 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 Behind the tracks. All these bolts. Hit them. This right here to adjust the height of your snowblower. Hit that axle behind you. Hit the axle. Okay. That's it. Every bolt you can find. Hit. We're going to head into the future. Come on. Hit that. Come on this side. Not too much there. There's your bolts. Hit those bolts. Like I said, wherever you see bolts. Just hit. Come on top. You're going to loop this thing up good, okay? You're going to take your white lithium now. And hit right here. 
wherever your pins go and you have rotating surfaces. So you come down underneath. Right there. That's where you shoot. It's a moving part. All moving parts get white lithium grease. It's completely drained. You gotta take your plug, put the washer on it, thread it back in. So you're gonna snug it up. You don't have to be Superman strength, like so. That's it. Okay. Now that it's drained, before you do anything, you're gonna take your oil. Fill it back up. A side, a side note, being that this is still new, you're gonna come to the back where your drain plug is, take a picture of this for future reference because these stickers are known to peel off and become unreadable. If anything, you can come back to this video. Here's your part number for all the Troy built parts. Here's your serial number, machine number, model number. Now that the drain is out of the way, you can come here and hit all these moving points with the white lithium grease. Okay? Just hit those. Pulley for the cables. And that's where run it through. This side, run it through. Change the gears. Forward, reverse, forward, reverse. Make sure those are all lubricated. The Troy Built 357 motor, it's a good number, takes 37.2 ounces of oil. Okay? So here you have. One U.S. quart. So you do the math. Slowly add oil and keep checking it randomly, okay? You don't want to overfill it. And being that there was oil in here and when you drained it out, not every single thing came out. It's not going to be exactly 37.2 ounces that you're putting back in, okay? Take a note of that. The 357 motor is going to take a quart, one complete quart, and then you're gonna take about a quarter of another quart to top it off, okay, like I said. When you check these motors, some of them you just put the dipstick like this, pull it out and get a reading. These motors require you to completely close it, take it out, 
and check. You want it to be toward the high side. In the hash mark, but closer to the high side. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is completely turn your snowmobile over so it's resting on your box right there, okay? Some people said this leaks. I never had an issue doing it. But if it does leak, put it back down on the side. You're gonna take a Ziploc bag. Take your cap off, put the Ziploc bag, and then put your cap back on. It basically makes a better seal, okay? This isn't completely full, so no worries. Now to get to the drive plate, your gears, your chain, you're gonna to wanna to take off these four bolts. You got one here, you got one here, one here, and one here. Take those off, pull your plate off. Those four bolts, 10 millimeter. To get this plate off, you're gonna to wanna to pull it towards you, and it comes out from underneath like that, under this bracket and this plate. You're gonna take it out. You're gonna to wanna to clean that off. This plate here. And here's where you have all your gears. This is your drive plate right here. This is belted to the motor. And then to drive the wheel, you have a drive gear right here. These wheels spin it, okay? And the way this system works, being if you look at the motor, you pull this way, the motor's gonna be, when you're facing it from behind, spinning clockwise. So this pressure plate is gonna be spinning clockwise. When you put this in drive, which is in forward right now, drive, this plate contacts this, this rubber gear, contacts this plate, which drives your wheels, okay? Let me show you what it looks like in reverse. That's drive, that's forward, first, slow speed. Right there is forward, high speed. Okay? This is reverse. As you can see, it's pretty much on the left side. It's on the left side of the center. So that puts it in opposite, in reverse. What you're gonna wanna do now is protect this wheel and the plate as much as possible. Okay, you don't want no lubrication on the wheel or the plate. So put a shop towel, shop rag, paper towel, whatever you got to protect that. Like so, okay? You're gonna take your white lithium grease and hit all these gears up top. You're gonna hit in here, all the teeth, all the way around. You're gonna do that on both sides. Get the small gear on the bottom. Get the big gear on top. Get that, get that. These bushings are in here. You're gonna take it. Spin it a little bit. You get the other side, the back end. Put your rag back over your plate and your wheel. Like so. Hit the other gears. Make sure you get all these teeth properly lubricated. Okay? Get the shaft in the middle. Get your smaller gear. Come on top. You're gonna lubricate here as well. This rod here that goes up to the top and that spring down there. Hit it with the lithium grease. And if that's done, you will take your rag back out and you're going to lubricate this shaft right here. Number one synthetic grease, which if you come to the back, 
most important thing, it goes down to negative 40 to 350 degrees. So we don't get negative 40, 40 over here. Finger. You don't want to go heavy here because you don't want the stuff flinging out and going on your drive plate. Okay? And you're going to coat this shaft here. Lightly coat it all around all the sides. Okay? It's not a straight pipe, it's a hexagonal pipe. So you're going to go lubricate all around. Come around back, go around the other side. Like I said, not too much, because you don't want, to, this spins real fast, and you don't want that getting on your plate. Okay, you gotta come to this side, lubricate this side, same way. A little bit on your fingers, like so. And work it all around. Too much, wipe it off. Okay, go around, come around top, go around the back and underneath. Okay. Now that's too much right there, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. So you wanna do is come back up top and cycle through all your gears. Forward, reverse two, reverse one, forward one, and go through all your forward gears. Basically, you're running that thing back and forth and lubricating inside. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. As you can see, it has a slight build up there, which is good. Take a rag, clean rag, and all the excess, lightly dry it up just a little. You don't want too much, like I said. Okay? Both sides. Okay, you don't want no lubrication ever on this wheel or on this plate. As you can see, this plate is dirty. Next thing you're gonna do is take the brake clean, clean off this plate and this wheel. You're gonna spray some brake clean on a rag. You don't want to spray in here and clean this off so it's looking new, okay? You're gonna take that same rag and roll this through it, okay? Just to clean off whatever might have oversprayed onto the wheel. Okay, like I said, look, this thing's real fast. And if you have too much grease on there, it will spling all over that plate and cause you headaches down the road. Yeah, so it looks like with everything cleaned up, now the place you're gonna wanna grease, which I just noticed, is just spring here and where that lever goes up. You're gonna wanna hit that with white lithium too. Make sure you don't get none on the belt. What you can see the condition of is pretty good. That's just dirt from the wheel. And you're gonna hit it with the lithium grease. That spring and this spring, hit it with the lithium grease. You could put a bead of fluid film and lithium grease on this shaft as well to prevent it from corroding any more than what it is. There's what you end up with. Well lubricated, fluid film the sides, plate is clean, lubricated the shaft, and put uh, fluid film on here. Make sure everything is fluid filmed and lubricated, okay? Put your plate back in, which I cleaned, and also had to put a film, a fluid film on it, because it's starting to rot out. Mount the plate back on, and I'm gonna show you where to put never sees. You're gonna take the four bolts and hold on to the plate. As you can see, which one is the bottom one or the ones that's rusted out. You're gonna take your never seize, anti seize. You're gonna put it on all the bolts on the threads, tighten it back up. You don't want these to break in there and cause any more headaches, okay? You do this every year, at the end of every year or in the springtime, you got nothing to worry about in the future. Then you have the plate on, four bolts. Fluid film the whole bottom, put it back up on its tracks, and I'll show you the next step. After you let it run for five minutes, check the oil. Once all that is done, you're done with the job. You're ready for another winter. You're gonna do this at the end of every season, and you have no worries in the future. Make it last. Make that hard-earned money last longer. 
Okay, hope that video helped you. Give it a thumbs up. Share it to those who might need it. This will work on the same one as the one without the tracks. Pretty much all snow blowers are the same. So take hints from everything. Pretty there could be little changes in between different models, but for the most part, they're all the same deal. Okay, take care, fellas.